Pockets and welcome to my home worm farming channel. I just wanted to say happy holidays from me and the pugs and let us get right into the African night crawlers who are going to be the garbage bin from now on. All right, let me put you down and we'll get started harvesting. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick harvest right here so that I can reduce the volume of the bin. You can harvest these about every month. I don't generally get around to it once a month but you can, once the bin is mature, you can generally get these harvesting and get about 10, 15 pounds of castings every month. So we're gonna, we're just doing this harvest because I need to make room for my new project of making the vermi bag little mammoth. And so let's get to it. The harvest on these are super simple and they only take a few minutes. Generally, you just undo one side of the, the bag like this and then use a little bit of a garden fork to get under there and your goal is to stop right above the zipper here otherwise things might fall you're always trying to keep that solid mass of castings in this area here to hold the structure and that generally is enough to keep the whole thing because of its moisture intact in a big mass at least until you start banging on it and knocking it down which we'll do in a little bit So I'm just going to feel in there, make sure I've got the same all the way across. And then I can zip up this half of the bag and move to the other side. Okay, here we are at the other side and it's going to be the same story. I'm just going to open up that zipper, use my claw. There's no worms down here for the most part, so the claw is not going to hurt anybody. But this is good for picking out the castings which when they get to the bottom can be kind of chunky and pretty compact so i'm going to get about half of a mortar tray out of the system and hopefully that will be enough to make room to add more of the large particle size feeding and bedding that i started doing for the project Okay, then we just grab the zipper, move it back together like that, and then you can, hopefully you can hear it, that it's kind of falling downward. I'll probably end up getting like a broom handle or something to poke it from the inside. I mean, it may seem like I'm hitting it pretty hard. It's not near hard enough to settle this. You can see where this is kind of baggy. That's not ideal. You want everything to be solid going down towards the bottom. So I'm going to give it a few more punches, but then I will ultimately go ahead and take a broom and poke it. All right, let's go look up top and see what they're doing. All right, here we are. And let's take a look and see what they have done. I see lots of springtails here. And there are a few gnats, so I probably should put that gnat trap back in at some point. Now looking at the, the cardboard, I think that it is starting to break down. Maybe not as fast as it would have been if it was uh, shredded, but I think all of the roly pulleys are inside of it and the little bin critters are definitely helping. So I'm gonna just start moving things around to see what we've got because we need to reduce the height of everything here. Uh, looks like this sweet potato is actually trying to produce roots or slips or something. Uh, if I didn't have one in the basement already, I would definitely rescue that and use that for my sweet potato slips in the spring. Around here, oops, a little bit of a worm ball I just disturbed. Around here, sweet potatoes take so long because there's not constant heat. I have to start them super early. So this is the part where I'm trying to reach down in here and knock everything flat at the bottom. Um, I just don't. I apparently have the hand strength to uh, beat on it a little bit and get it to go down. The structure of how this bin works is too important. You can't just leave the air pockets. If you do, then the bin will not operate correctly, which is one of the things that people 
had said with in the comments in regards to possibly this uh, large particle size may cause problems because it may actually create air pockets where I would not want because that does not allow the worms to have the moisture that they need. Uh, microbes either. I mean, they can't. You can see how dry it is in here. I'm going to have to add water. Um, this week, I haven't added the water this week, so it's taking about one gallon or four liters of water to maintain it during furnace season. And although we did feed a lot last time, I'm not seeing any of the tomatoes or citrus or peppers that we fed last time. There was some squash, but uh, I don't see any evidence of that with the exception of the pineapples, the only food, and that was from well over a month ago. So I think I have everything knocked down well, and I can mound up on the side again so that I have room for my old layer of bedding. I'm trying to make room here. And then I can put the food on top of this. Put in the comments below, have you ever done this sort of an experiment where you just put large chunks of food? So far, they're keeping up with the every four weeks feeding. Got some cabbage here, bread, tomatillos, and a little sauerkraut that has gone bad. And I think if we go a little bit lighter on the food, maybe they will go a little heavier on their bedding. Okay, so, yep, Christmas cards, paper. Just gonna tuck that in here and there. Probably should get a little bit more on top here. Not enough bedding on top here, so I'm gonna have to go get some more uh, so I don't end up with gnats or other bugs that might try and escape the bin. Okay, this is a really good thing to save your hands when you are trying to tear up large boxes. Um, this is, uh, just got this little blade here and then it works like a power tool. So if you have uh, hands that have arthritis or maybe they're not just very strong like mine, uh, my hand strength is not good. So this actually helps me out a lot and the Amazon link is below. Should have done this before, but just keeping it real, uh, that is, that's life, right? It's busy, it's the holidays, tons of things to do, including take care of the worm bin. So need to make sure these guys are taken care of, but also not waste time. There is the mortar tray underneath this. So if anything um, leaks, it will go into that, which Considering how dry the sides are, I'm not expecting it to. I'm putting about a half a gallon of water or two liters on here right now. That should soak in really well without any problems. Then I'm gonna go back to my plastic covering here to try and retain as much moisture as I possibly can. If you have any questions about the Vermibag Little Mammoth or the African Nightcrawlers, feel free to put that in the comments below. And if I don't know the answer, Possibly one of the other viewers will know the answers. Okay, so if you like the African Nightcrawlers, I have a playlist right over here that you can watch. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.